Hi Lucy Shrimpton, the Sleep Nanny here. Um, today I'm going to answer the question, what is a night terror? Now, night terrors is a term that gets thrown around a little bit too easily um, these days. And I think people often think what they're seeing is a night terror when actually it's more likely to be a confusional arousal. Now, Night terrors are typically seen in pre-adolescent and adolescent age children. So when you're talking about toddlers and preschoolers, little ones generally, um, it's, it's more likely to be a confusional arousal. Um, they're very similar, but and, and they're also very common. So um, don't think there's anything wrong with your child or you know there's anything strange. It's, it's quite common. My own son um, still experiences night terrors. And one of the main causes for them as well is overtiredness, much like many sleep difficulties. So you might notice that they, they're more likely to occur on a night when there's been a busy day or he's maybe just got a bit overtired. Um, I certainly do see that pattern with, with my son. So what do they look like? How do you identify a confusional arousal as opposed to a nightmare or a bad dream? Well, a confusional arousal is when your child, um, may, they may be thrashing about in the bed, they can be like kicking their legs out, um, maybe seem frustrated. They might say things like, no, no, stop it, you know, words that can seem a little disturbing for you to hear as a parent. Um, it, it's all part of the confusional arousal. They can look wide awake, their eyes might be wide, they, you know, they're looking around. Um, but they're not actually really truly awake. So you can go in and try and comfort them, but they, they'll seem to look right through you. Um, sometimes they might know who you are or they might not. Um, visually they might see that it's mummy, but then in their head it's somebody else and it's, it's all very confused for them. So really it's it doesn't really help very much to go to them it's better if you can just monitor them keep an eye make sure they're safe make sure they're not going to hurt themselves knock something over or you know be injured in any way make sure they're safe and you know let it pass um you shouldn't really last more than 15 minutes um they can but usually that's it's done in that time and whilst they can be um angry or upset and confused, um, it, it isn't so much of a screaming terror that you would potentially see in an older child. Um, night terrors are truly terrifying. Uh, confusional arousals, whilst they can be upsetting um, and you know they, they might shout out, they might cry, um, it's, it's different. <laughs> um, so what should you do? As I say, make sure they're safe, uh, make sure they're not going to get hurt and ride it out. If you feel that you need to go and hold your child, you know, with a strong hug hold um, and try and reassure them, by all means you can do that. You might get some response from them. You may ask a question and get an irrelevant answer, because <laughs> that happens too. Um, also, don't be upset or or shocked if they push you away because they might you, you'll become part of it and they may push you away and or, or tell you off and shout at you and um, it's not you it's it's just the confusion so um, from a lot of experience with this I, I recommend just leaving them alone um, monitor them if you have a video monitor that's always handy because you can keep a, a, a firm eye on what's happening and it should pass now these typically happen um, in the first few hours of sleep, usually in the first two hours, sometimes you know, within the first four hours of sleep. Um, you don't tend to see them later in, in the night, you can, but it's, it's more common um, to be early, um, early in the evening, uh, early in the sleep time. So uh, that is really what a confusion or arousal looks like. I'm sure I've, I've spoken to many parents who have identified these kind of symptoms and said, yeah, yeah, that's definitely what my child's doing. Um, how, can you, how can you prevent them in the first place? Well, have a look at their overall sleep. Does your child still need a nap? Um, have they had a few late nights? Could, you know, maybe a few early nights would help is if the nap, if they are still napping and the naps haven't been very good, haven't been long enough or haven't been there, then get those naps in. Um, just make sure that they're getting enough sleep overall. And like I said, a couple of early nights might help too. So try and avoid overtiredness uh, is going to be your, your 
main goal to prevent uh, a confusion or arousal even happening. So I hope that helps and uh, clears up any confusion of your own. And uh, as usual, you know where to find me if you need any extra help at sleepnanny.co.uk. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you soon.